So the uh, the government departments didn't like to have to pay for their their penalty their official stamps, <clears throat> and they didn't give them any money to do that. So the first things they realized that the Cong congressional reports were big and heavy, and the government the agriculture department was small and didn't have any money. So they made those free right away to sit the mail without postage, and then in July of 1st of 1877, uh, penalty mail came and was born. And then in 79, it went, that initially was D.C. only. And then two years later, a little less than two years, it went to the field, op field offices uh, around, the, around the country. So what were the requirements? Well, you need an envelope that was printed or written that said official business, the name of the department, and an actual penalty clause printed or written on it uh, by you know, and that, that was it. And there are a few written penalty clauses and a couple of the long ones, but I, I think they were kind of crazy. But I guess it was cheaper than, some ways cheaper. So these are some examples of the penalty clauses. The first one is the biggest, biggest and longest one you'll ever see. And it can be a single line across a, a, a legal size envelope, just all, all that printed. Or it can be maybe three or four or five lines and broken in different places. And then they went all the way down to like penalty 300. I think there was one that just says 300. So, and if you look here, let's go back. The first clause, there's a word envelope. And then the second clause on the right hand side it says card. Well, they would tell you what kind, not always, but a lot of times the early ones would tell you what kind of device it was on. So there's eight different ones in the postal card. There's only one and tag is really scarce. I think there's one of that and there's one of the slip. And then it, it goes up from there until it, there's lots of envelopes. So the amounts are $300, but they're written different ways in the, in the clause itself. It's either written out as $300 or $300 or $300.00. I don't know, understand the dot zero zero. I mean, it didn't have any sense at all, but it's okay. So this resulted in things like, this is a, basically one clause. It's penalty for private use. And then you have the three different values, way of just expressing uh, $300. And we've been, I've been working with some people on a, a census and in this case, we would count this as one clause because there's too many. Uh, once you start adding that and a bunch of other stuff, it gets real dicey. And it gets really uh, a list that probably nobody's going to want to attack. And then, then you have things like varying words. A different printer would decide that instead of will, he'd use shell. Instead of subject, he'd say subjected and these other things. And these all seem to be there doesn't make any sense on it, but it does mean, yeah, lawfully be, be lawfully, yeah, it's kind of okay. Just kind of strange. And uh, let's go back here. On the clauses, <clears throat> I decided a long time ago that there were a couple of different ways people were trying to organize these. And I decided the easiest way to organize it was alphabetical by words, no commas, no, nothing else. Just look at the words. If any person using is in a list alphabetically or wherever it belongs, and then the whole thing. So using that, and also you have uh, the clauses sometimes are inside uh, boxes and circles and stuff. And they're borders. So you have a rectangle, a fancy corners, a circle, the Earlier ellipses, this week we found shields, out long diamond, and an oct octagon. Octagon. Well, I think that's oh, I spelled that wrong. Okay, so you got some kind of rectangle, either square or, or length lengthwise, and a few of them are up and down, almost like a stamp. Uh, <clears throat> circles. Usually, those are with lots of circles around them in kind of fancy things. And then you have. Ellipses, and they always, ellipses, most of the ellipses have uh, teeth on them. Uh, there's a few shields. Um, shields are, 
Uh, not that common, but they're not super rare either. These two guys are really rare. There's two examples of each of these. Uh, the triangle, the diamond is connected to the State Department, and the one on the right is connected to Florida in 1879. <clears throat> and then you have the detail for a rectangular box. And there's two things with this this particular uh, clause. Uh, you have the uh, C the 300. Well, it's actually dollar 30 and a C. That's a C, a large C, and not an O. And not a zero. So there's a few mistakes, but not very many. And then on the corners, you have the things called dingbats. And those are from uh, uh, when people did, lay, put type in, they had spacers. And they're still around today. They're, I think we call some of them mojos. Uh, but uh, these are dingbats. And there's a, a bunch of those. And these are the ones I've so far recorded. There's 24 dingbats on the various, and they're always square corners, you know, like rectangle corners. Even if the rectangle, like the third one in, is very fancy rectangle, it's not a line, that's that's wigglies all the way around the whole whole clause. The one on the left, I didn't, I couldn't tell what that was when I looked at it. They were very small, and I looked at it and said, well, I don't think I have that one, so I just bought it. And then I got it, and a friend of mine helped me, and we got it scanned, and went, wow, I like that. And I really like the one, the, the red one, the fourth one in. That's like a hurricane, a cyclone of some kind, not hurricane, cyclone. So there's about 24. Uh, I'm sure there's ones out there I haven't seen, but who knows? Then you have illustrated organization seals, basically the corner cards. And each, some of, even the, the one, the second one in, the medical department, there's three different varieties of that. So some of these look like, you know, they should be simple, but the one in the lower right-hand corner, the eagle is very, very, all kinds of different varieties of the eagle for the Navy. And then the one here, the revenue cutter, that became the Coast Guard uh, in a few years later. <clears throat> and right now there's 68 varieties, and I'm sure that that's not, I know that's not the right number, but it's close. Then we have illustrated penalty clauses themselves. And the upper left, you have many of those from different departments, different number of rings, and it might say Weather Bureau, and they might be from some other place, all kinds of stuff. Uh, some of these are really scarce. The, the lower left one, the eagle, I've only seen one example of that. And the upper right one we'll talk about later. So, if you take everything involved in a penalty clause itself, you have thousands and thousands of possibilities because you have the text, you have where the text breaks, you have the color, you have the font, you have the font style. Is it hand stamped or printed? You have, is it caps? Is it all caps? Is it initial caps? Uh, what Are there watermarks and on the paper? And there are some. Uh, what borders are around it? Uh, pointing hand is the beginning of the clause. Punctuation, illustrated seals, illustrated penalty clause. And is it in the lower left, upper left, or upper right? Um, that makes uh, for, frankly, probably a nightmare for somebody trying to get involved in an area where most of this stuff is hard to find in the first place. So the significant penalty mail events themselves, it was authorized in 1877. In 1879, it was authorized to be used outside of D.C. in the field offices. In 82, the field offices could use it, could not use it to private citizens. Um, that was a result of the Interior Department making some complaint. Then 1884, official stamps were discontinued, and everybody had to use the penalty clause. And that included the Smithsonian and independent commissions and so forth that were authorized in 84 to start using penalty mail. So we have some forms. Here's an initial, uh, <coughs> excuse me, initial uh, disclosure to the post office that there were going to be penalty mail throughout the postal system, not just in D.C. And if we go to the next slide, here is the actual flux, crux of that uh, memo. You see at the top it says free envelopes, 
they hadn't been using it. They didn't use the word penalty until a little bit later. Whoops, hang on. Uh, it was approved in March of 7, but it started May 1st of 79. Went to all, uh, all, yeah, yeah, all right. uh, somebody's making noise. Turn off your mic, please. So we have some forms of, for ordering. And I haven't quite figured this out because how many people are going to order the third assistant postmaster general forms? I think it's only him. So you know, at the top is his plane and postmaster, but I think the rest of these are kind of strange. Yeah, postmaster money order business, but the rest of them are pretty much office oriented. So I don't know, it's kind of weird, but it's, it's nice to be able to have this. Uh, and then when they sent the, the forms and the envelopes out to the, from the post office envelope agency, uh, you know, this is exactly the same form they used for regular envelopes, except in this, it says free post office envelopes. That's the only thing that's different from, from previous uh, forms like this. So this is, this was a big piece of paper. I haven't seen, I don't think ever, anybody's ever seen the bottom because they had to send it back saying they got, they got the form, they got their envelopes. And so uh, I've always been asked this and then until September of last year, I, I sort of knew something was coming on because we had talked and I helped the, the gentleman on, uh, uh, with, with some items in mind for his, his article. But the penalty mail was penalty for the $300 penalty was a misdemeanor. So therefore it never got into the federal court records, which I had looked at before with a friend and we couldn't find anything. Well, they're in local papers. And if there's a big article in the American Fly List in September, and I, it's a fabulous article, you'll, you'll get a kick out of it. There's a lot of funniness in it. Um, I think that one thing that is people would get the, uh, the free seeds. You could order seeds from the agriculture department and they would get them. And then they, there was little jokes about, well, if I plant the seeds, who do I, can we actually eat the food or do I have to send it back? So <laughs> kind of interesting. Uh, so the cover order, next will be postal history. This, that's just an overview of uh, what penalty mail is and how complex it is. Uh, <clears throat> we'll start with the president and then we'll go through the eight departments and the order of their power in the government. And then we'll go through some a uh, few independent commissions. And we're probably gonna move fast because uh, I have a, a heck of a lot of things to look at. Uh, and I'll try not say too much about most of them. So this is the world's first penalty cover, uh, July 7th, 1877. It's dated on the back. Uh, it's not the nicest cover, but since it's the early, first one, I'll take it anyway. I probably need to get some of the stage removed somehow. Um, but <clears throat> and it's dated on the back. And this, in addition, this is a very interesting cover. This is from a gentleman named Warren Taylor. He sent in mutilated currency and got new currency back. And he did this over 30 or 40 or 50 years, over a long period of time. He had to be making money. And he must have convinced some people up in Vermont and that part of the world that their money wasn't any good if it was damaged. Because um, he did this a lot. And there's a lot of covers from him surviving that. And uh, it was, the tr it could be sent back without any postage, because uh, it was it was money, new money. So the treasure, even before this treasury department could send it free and register it free. So the executive was next, is first. This is the earliest uh, executive use. Uh, there's the earliest from many departments in here. Uh, you'll see them as we go along. This is 1878. He, they didn't get into it in 77. Many people didn't get it. Many of the departments didn't get involved with the penalty mail until 79. And I don't know why they dra drove their feet. Maybe they had a lot of stamps they wanted to use because <clears throat> they weren't going to get the money back for the stamps they didn't use. So this is a uh, morning cover uh, used to England. And there's a couple things about this. You'll notice the, the, the corner card says office of the president of the United States. Well, Arthur didn't move into the White House once he became president. They 
restored the the white the executive mansion, um, <clears throat> and <clears throat> he didn't like the word penalty clause penalty mail on his envelopes. <clears throat> so when he had envelopes produced, he didn't add that. He didn't have that printed on the envelope, even though it was a legal requirement. Nobody's going to tell the president he can't do what he wants to do, as we've noticed recently. Uh, so when Theodore Roosevelt came along, he changed the executive mansion to the White House and then the, to the White House. And what happened is uh, on October 16th, 1901, Booker T. Washington had dinner with the president at the executive mansion. The next morning, once the senators and congressmen and the Southern papers found out, they were not happy and they used the N word, unfortunately. And, oh, we're in the wrong version of this. Can we, but hang on, I'm gonna do something here. I just realized we don't have the right version here. So hang on. I'm gonna have to do this one more time. We'll get the front part is roughly the same. Uh, I noticed I didn't have the, the phrase N-word uh, in that little discussion there. So I knew we were on the wrong version. Well, hang on. Sorry about that. I do this twice. Do, 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 do. The big file. Now, come on. Well, let me tell the story. Um, so he was really upset. And so the next morning, <coughs> after all this controversy, he said, okay, to his secretary, let's change the name of executive mansion to White House and tell everybody all the stationary all the correspondence, everything, anything that I'm going to sign will say White House. And um, as soon as we get back to my thing here, come on. What are you doing? Okay. So we have the, uh, <clears throat> the the note from his secretary telling people to do that. Uh, it's in the white. It's in the national. It's in the national. Uh, the archives of the of the White House White House themselves, and it's really kind of uh, there. We go. Okay, let's go down here. Okay, can everybody see that? No, they probably can't. I need to share my share my screen again. Okay, is that okay? Liz, somebody? It's fine. We can see okay. it. All right. Yeah. So, it, the, so he, um, he, he, of course, um, Booker T. Washington had had many dinners with Roosevelt in New York, and nobody ever complained, and he didn't think about it, but. He was the president and he was also, you know, he was not the president when he had dinner before and he was in the North and the South was all up, up in arms. So this is a notice that went out from his secretary saying, I'm directed by the president to bring to your attention his desire to change the headings and dates so forth from executive mansion to White House. And that went in effect like right away. That was the, that was the same day that uh, the day after the dinner. And then uh, a few days later, the Treasury basically sent out the same thing, saying, we're changing it. And everything that he signs has to be changed. Anything in the future. So here is the first use of, of an actual envelope with White House. The earliest one I've been able to find. This is 25th. And it just says White House officially. Still doesn't say penalty mail. He's still doing it the way Arthur did. But he did change the name. Uh, I, you kind of wonder what the implication was. This the White House only for white people, but he called it the White. He called it White House. Then some sometime in uh, 80, 90, 1903, they added the penalty clause back to the mail. This is a 
the cover from the Summer White House at Oyster Bay. And then sometime, not sure exactly when, but in 1905, they changed the name of White House because people got confused. There were many White Houses around. They named it the White House. And, <clears throat> and it's been that ever since. So sometimes people forget that it's the White House and not White House. So the other thing is strange is this is a, a penalty co cover from the vice president. And um, he's, there's two of these known. One's to his son in Europe. I, I, it's a little question if that's personal mail. But the vice president didn't have the authorization to use penalty mail. He was authorized only for a franking privilege because he was the president of the Senate. And so I don't know how he got to do this. Nobody else has ever done it. Uh, his name was Fairbanks. Uh, Alaska, Fairbanks, Alaska is named after him. Now, this is kind of weird. Uh, I just got this a couple of years ago. Uh, I'd never seen a vice president. And it hadn't dawned to me. Why not? And I went out after I got this. I went out to the laws. And it said, when it talks about penalty mail, it lists people. And he's not on there. But he's on the franking privilege. So next is State Department. It's a very early use of, in June of 79. Um, there's an earlier one, a couple earlier ones in this. I, I, I have one, but it's, it, it doesn't look that good. And even though this has holes in it, it's still a great cover. And it notes the penalty clause is hand, hand stamped. And the State Department used a lot of their old envelopes and just hand stamped them. They didn't print them right away. So this is a use of a penalty clause and a stamp. Initially, the State Department started using penalty mail, and then sometime along in A3, don't know what happened, they went back to stamps. And this is the only example of both means being on the same envelope. This is an inbound Bucks cover Brock, from you guys can pick anything someplace. Up. I remember uh, correctly oh. when it came. Oh, this is one from uh, Funchal. I think, yeah, Funchal. Uh, this is so. This is going through B.F. Stevens in London. Uh, this is the earliest penalty clause, printed penalty clause. Uh, oh, we need to fix that in the future. Uh, so it's there's three different expos advertised basically on the same envelope. I've never seen anything like this before. Um, so this is the the State Department representative for the various. Uh, Expos, you know, Cotton Expo, Industrial Expo, and the Southern Expo. Expo. And this, yeah, okay. <clears throat> this is a recent one I've added. Uh, this is a cover to South Africa, which is a very nice destination. This left DC is a five cent, with a five cent stamp, got all the way to New York, and they turned it around <clears throat> with the, the red New York do, do marking. Sent it back to D.C. and D.C. they they hit it with the vertical compulsory uh, Washington D.C. do ten cent they write, wrote wrote the ten cent in the ten cent stamp was added sent back put back in the mail and then it went all the way you wonder is this is this really it doesn't have a penalty clause on it because they they were using old envelopes for especially they didn't need a penalty mail going overseas. But we know it's official business because this is a big uh, Department of State wax seal. It went through London, and then it has on the upper right hand has a, a receiving mark in Cape Town. So this is what's strange about this is in the past, the Foreign Department would add stamps for the executive for the executive office if they were short. An example of that is like this one. Uh, this is a State Department stamp being added to a post office envelope because the post office just dropped it in the mail and said going to Norway. But someplace between 1870, 1883 and 1890, they changed. No, the stamps went away in 84, but even at this point in 83, they weren't, weren't supposed to be used for foreign mail, but they, they did it anyway. They stopped paying for short letters for the uh, executive branch. Don't know why. And you know, you have the deficiency and go fix it, you know, you're gonna you might not be able to get something in the future. 
And then this is a, this is an acute cover. This is inbound from Brazil, went to DC on a pouch mail, was hit with a uh, penalty mail hand stamp, and then sent on its way to the Philippines. Um, yeah, which is nice, but there's something missing in this that I didn't write down. The guy from uh, down in Brazil was wanting to trade stamps, and he used the f free mail to do that. I thought that was really kind of interesting. Uh, this is 1901. Then the Treasury Department, we saw earlier, you saw the earliest Treasury Department envelope. It's the earliest penalty cover in the world. This is a, this is a height. This is one of the Conant covers. There's a lot of those around. This has a 25 cent rate. This is five times rate. This is probably the earliest uh, use of regular stamps instead of official stamps when they changed it in May of 81. Uh, 80, 80, 79, they said you can't use official stamps on official mail anymore, even though the foreign department did. You weren't supposed to. And this is the, in, 18, in 1879, May 1st of 1879, uh, penalty mail was then allowed to be used in, out in the field. And this is the early, this is the first day cover of that, that use uh, from the Treasury Department down in uh, Philadelphia, and it's dated with some stuff on the back. Then this is a, it shows an example of combined usage. The 12 cent paid the internal postage, double rate, and registry, no. No, no, no I, that's wrong. Okay, the 15 cent pays triple rate to Europe. The, 12 cents stamp pays the registry fee of 10 cents, and there's two cents left over. To, this is on its way to Germany and Prussia at the time. <clears throat> then we had an agreement in 1887 with Canada, but when penalty mail first came out, we didn't change the treaty, and it wasn't written in such a way that it would have allowed penalty mail. So you couldn't send penalty mail to Canada, so you had to actually pay the stamp. So these are, this is paying the rate to Canada. <clears throat> Very nice cover. Then this is, this is the one that's, I didn't pay a lot for this, but I found out this is my most, most valuable penalty cover, unless I get somebody really interested in penalty mail. <coughs> this is a cover to China. Uh, it's a wrapper. So that's one cent international rate. And you see the one cent stamp on the, on the right. It's got a penalty clause. And the little thing in the center that says to pay the little box, that's, um, there's nine examples of those. And this is the only US example of a cover going into China and they had to pay the postage inside. <coughs> Excuse me, inside. Yeah, when I bought that, I didn't know this was a great cover. I just liked it. And I, somebody who was looking at my Xeroxes one time said, oh, that's nice. And I went back and I said, well, tell me about that. And he told me how much it was worth. And I went, whoa, okay, I, I guess I'll keep it. This is the earliest War Department use. It's, it's just, you know, a nice early cover. It had the contents. Um, and I, I actually found this in Philadelphia. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the War Department had, and the Post Office Department both, but the War Department in particular had uh, envelopes, official envelopes, and they converted these in a couple of different ways to penalty mail. And this one, they used a hand stamp to convert it to penalty mail. And most of these are out of like, well, the only ones I've seen are Arizona or Dakota. And some are converted by, uh, by a label. And here's a label, you know, we're trying to convert it. Um, this is the only used example of this particular uh, label on a three cent uh, envelope. And it's not dated because that's a, uh, a hand stamp for a railroad and there's no data on it, unfortunately. But um, well, no big deal. It's still a nice cover. Uh, this one I, I, I think is really strange. 
This is going to Denmark. It's going to this guy from the Second Calvary, but it's going to a really small town near another by small town on a small island in Denmark. But the address says Saddler Troop M, Second Cavalry, U.S. Army. Why would you send it that way and not just? Maybe there's a lot of Frederick Hansons there. I don't know. Kind of strange. And suppose he's due collected uh, eighty centimes. Then you got uh, the inauguration of the Statue of Liberty. This is mailed the day before the actual unveiling. The Statue of Liberty was hidden inside um, a big tent kind of thing. And they had a big party and, <clears throat> excuse me, be nice if we had contents on this. Most of the covers do not have contents, unfortunately. This is the, if you look in the upper right-hand corner, the two right words at the top say expeditionary forces. That phrase wasn't used until World War I, and this is 1888. Al Kugel has never seen anything this early with that particular uh, expedi you know, expeditionary forces. This is obviously, this is from the, uh, from San Francisco, the, and it's going, obviously they were going off uh, onto the uh, Spanish-American War in, in 98. Uh, then you have some, just things that aren't really, probably really per se, yeah, but this is an RFD steamboat mail. And it's going from Detroit up the river and up the lake and then up some rivers and to a small place. And on the back, you have the Detroit and Algonquin steamboat. And underneath it says rural free delivery. You can't see all of it. And on the right, there's an N. That's for going north. And they're going south one has a, a circle with an S in it. Uh, there's three of these known. Uh, when I found this, there was only one. I, I really like this cover because it's, it's mailed at least on the month and day of my, that I was born on. So I guess this cover was designed for me. Uh, there's the other two covers. One is mint and one is used, but it's not in very good shape. Uh, but this particular coin, uh, pen, illustrated penalty clause we didn't know about that until I found this. There was no records. Nobody had ever seen one. If they'd seen it, they didn't know what they were looking at. Um, so if you look at this, this is the seal of the War Department. You may have not seen it before. It's got flags and cannons and cannonballs and uh, belts and all kinds of stuff. Um, guns, you, you name it. Uh, but this is... Uh, of the penalty clause itself, this is the rarest cover uh, there is. You know, bar, you know, not first day and anything like that, but still, this is really special. And we got Navy. This is the earliest Navy Department cover. This is 1878 again. Um, another hand stamp. Most of the early ones are hand stamped. Um, then you've got uh, the private... They mailed the private citizens. We're not supposed to have, uh, after 82 sometime, we're not supposed to have just the penalty clause. So this is two, two Navy stamps paying to a private citizen uh, so that they can actually mail it to him. Then you've got, um, this is, uh, this one, I, I like to tell a story about this. I get a phone call from a friend of mine he said, oh, I'm looking at a cover I think you'd like to see. And this is a stamp show, and the second day, I've been around the show, and there's nothing there for me. And he said, oh, can you come over? And I said, well, I'm sitting at the Classic Society booth. I, I can't get up. I'm by myself. So he asked the dealer, and the dealer said, okay, comes over and shows this to me, and I buy it. And he goes back, and he has to fight with the dealer to get his dealer discount. Um uh, I'd never seen anything. This is a naval experimental battery. They were shooting near Annapolis, uh, out on an island, practicing various cannons and powder and testing to see if the powder was the right kind of powder and how, how effective it was. This had contents. This is the, the front side of it. It says naval experimental battery. And, and uh, it tells him, you know, I haven't actually turned this down, but he's actually talking about 
the various kind of things that they were testing. Now here he tells him what he, what he wants next time for, for to do more testing. Uh, I think this is a fabulous cover. The contents is really great. Then, <clears throat> so in 1872, there was an expedition to the to the north, up above the Arc, near the Arctic, um, and it was called the Vincent called it Greeley Expedition. And the next year they went to pick them up. Let's see, four, three, two. Yeah, and they went there. They couldn't find them. Um, so they went back and they had to be real, you know, they tried again and one of the ships got destroyed uh, in, the ice, in the ice, but nobody died. They got all their, they left some provisions behind and they went back on a big effort in 1884 and they actually found seven survivors. One of them died on the way home, which is kind of tragic after being rescued. And of course, they were con uh, they weren't prosecuted, but they were con uh, everybody said, "Well, you must have eaten every people in order to survive cannibalism," uh, and maybe they did. Um, I th this is a cover that I found in a large lot. Uh, amazing, you know. Sometimes large lot. Nobody knew what this was. And I by this time I knew a little bit about the the greedy expedition because I'd found a cover. I bought a cover, uh, an official cover, official stamps, and somebody at a show left a message for me, and I called him up, and he said, you know what you have? I said, well, no, why? So he told me I had a, a greedy cover, and I did all kinds of research, and then this came up, and I bought this. And so what you have here is a, a this is a corner card. It says a greedy exp relief expedition. This is after they had been successful in uh, bringing people back. And there was a, they wrote all kinds of, um, they wrote a big uh, research on this. It was like a book, all kinds of stuff done. And this was sent during that process after they'd come back. Then in 1884, when official stamps were discontinued, they gave the re registry fee to the government for free, as long as it's mailed outside of Washington, D.C., I mean, inside Washington, D.C. So this is, this may be the earliest, I don't know, it's, it's definitely really early. This is 86, it's only two years afterwards. So this is an example of uh, free registry mail uh, in D.C. Then this is another, this is an expedition. <clears throat> uh, this is an eclipse expedition. And you see this is going to West Africa. And Professor Todd was a big, uh, expert in that kind of area and the navy gave them a a couple ships and a bunch of marines and they went down to africa and built a big complex with cameras and all kinds of uh, things to make sure the camera is going to be the right angle at the right time and then the day of the eclipse uh the fog came in so they had to quickly take some glass break some glass get it sit over it near a fire someplace jump on a ship and go offshore in order to watch the eclipse. Uh, <clears throat> there's there's two, three examples of this. Uh, the other two are to his wife, one from inside the U.S. that is now in a collection in, in Canada, and another one that I have uh, on his way down to Africa. They stopped, and he, he mailed it, a cover back to his wife that has stamps on it, and I could tell where it was from there was a penalty clause with just nip, a little bit of the, the clause at the bottom showed. So then this is a, a, a use during the Spanish American War, uh, mailed in uh, Havana, Havana and mailed to Havana from, I'm not sure where, you know, I can't read that, but you know, by then we were in control and penalty mail could be used there. Then this is an interpossession use. This is from Guam to the Philippines. And you just don't see a lot of interpossession uses. It's, you think of going to the possession or back to the US, but not from one possession to another. Then I love these. Uh, I have two of them now. 
<clears throat> these are uh, shore passes. On the left-hand side, you see it's from the USS Nebraska. It was commissioned uh, enough time to be a valid in, in this collection, although there's no dates on it, unfortunately. And you can't hardly read anything. On the right, you'll notice that there's an actual penalty clause <clears throat> saying, if found, drop in a mailbox. This reminds one of the, the old keys you used to get in a motel. It said, if you, you know, if you still have this one after you leave, drop it in a mailbox and we'll pay for it. So that kind of thing. You wonder how many bars and honky tonks this card has been in over the years. Then we have the Interior Department. This is the earliest U.S. Interior Department. Uh, <clears throat> very, the Interior Department moved to printed uh, coin cards very fast. This is a hand stamp. This is July of 77, so this is really early. Uh, and they're, they're the first ones that moved to the upper right-hand corner with the printed clauses. Uh, there was no direction to, but they, they did it themselves. Uh, this is a kind of a strange cover. It doesn't, doesn't say penalty mail on it, but it's official business. It's got the guy's name, and it's, he's the superintendent. The census office had a special law that was passed for them because they didn't, maybe they weren't able to get uh, what they needed, printed envelopes, or maybe there were big packages, mailing all kinds of stuff. So as long as they put the information in the upper right-hand corner on something, they could mail it uh, free. Uh, Holds, holds no illusion that um, the pressure on somebody's somebody's talking. Uh, the technological. Let me see. Okay, um, so from the early early on in eighteen uh, when penalty mail came along, there was a real effort not to cancel the clause. I don't know why, <clears throat> but there was definitely an effort. I mean, I've, I've seen hundreds, I mean, you know, maybe a hundred of these. Not this particular one, but not canceled. Um, and then after 84, it, they were canceled. There was a, a little notice went out saying, move the clause to the upper right-hand corner and cancel it. So this was an effort not to cancel the clause. They put the, the uh, this is an experimental cancel, uh, a Levitt machine. So they put the <clears throat> envelopes in upside down so they wouldn't cancel the clause. And I have, I have a cover that also has it's a similar kind of idea, but the clause in the lower left-hand corner, so they, they left it right side up, so it would, would not cancel the clause also. <clears throat> this is going down to uh, U.S. Columbia, but it's, it's to a ship in the South Pacific. So this cover went down. It was short paid. Uh, they put uh, Columbian stamps on it to pay the postage, the required you know, the postage due. They're not posted to stamps, but they're they're still and it's, then this went across to the other side of the isthmus and met the Mohican uh, in the Pacific side. <clears throat> I haven't been able to find out for sure whether the Mohican was supposedly supposed to go down to the uh, islands and bring back one of the uh, uh, statues from Easter Island, but I don't know if that happened or not. Is Easter Island? Yeah, I think so. And I haven't been able to figure out if anybody knows what this is. Uh, this is left-hand side of uh, a little sticker on it. It mentions Panama and Council and so forth, but I'd like to see what the whole thing is and I haven't been able to find anything like that. <clears throat> now, this is an example. We saw the compulsory not very well defined in, in the State Department. This this is well, you can see it, it says compulsory Washington, D.C., do so many cents, this is 12 cents. This, but this didn't go to New York and come back. This, this left um, DC as a stampless cover, but it was deposited as a stampless cover, turned back, sent back home, saying, you know, you gotta give us 12 cents. You know, I can't, can't get away for free to, to get to Melbourne, Australia. And so they put 12 cents on it and then uh, uh, it went forward. Now, interesting, there's two of these the same guy. One says, we've got your, uh, your paperwork. And the one six months later says, well, we're starting to work on your paperwork. Uh, kind of strange, a little slow. Well, typical government, everything is slow, right? And this is uh, two different Italian, two different postage due issues on, on one stamp, just a nice 
push these do. Um, and you can see the the two tens are overprinted with the with two with just a two big a big two. And you've got this is uh, this is from Alaska. This is early juice from Alaska. It's before the gold rush, and before the gold rush, there wasn't a lot of mail out there because there weren't very many people. <clears throat> and this is from Sitka. Then there was the, Expo the Columbia, Columbia Exposition <clears throat> in 93. And this is a Department of Interior cover with very, the most elaborate uh, penalty corner card. And a uh, little bit of detail here. This is the, the, the corner card. You'll notice that um, this is Columbus. He seems like an older guy. This is printed. The ship is very detailed, and he's surrounded by a bunch of monks who don't have any hair. And then this is two weeks before the expo. This is two weeks after the expo. This is from a, this is a litho. You'll notice that Columbus has uh, aged backwards. He's now young. The ship isn't well defined because this is a lithograph, and he's surrounded by a bunch of military guys, and they all have hair. So uh, two very different things. You, like this one, you know, they don't have any hair at all. So it's kind of interesting. Nice. I, I consider these really fabulous. This one, I was sent a, a, a Xerox copy of this. Well, Xerox, probably back then. It was 1890, 19, just before Pacific 97. <clears throat> a friend of mine, Henry Spellman, who was an auction, auctioneer at that time, sent me a Xerox of this cover and said, I can't tell you where it is, but you should at least know this exists. So Henry dies just after the show, and we go up to his uh, remembrance ceremony, and there's two stamp people there, me and a dealer, and this friend of mine comes up to me and says, uh, you should know that that Xerox you got, no, I own the cover. It took me over 15 years to convince him to finally sell it to me. Um, just a fabulous story. Okay, this is a this is to a uh, a leper colony. It was being, you have ten minutes. Oh, okay. Well, we'll, we'll go through uh, leper colony in Philippine Islands. You see, there's the corner card. This is the earliest Justice Department cover in '79. Uh, this is Justice had this eagle. This is a standard eagle. This was. Pr produced in uh, Leavenworth, Fort Leavenworth for the prison there. If you look at the two of them, the eagles, everything is different about them. <clears throat> I almost missed the one with the Fort Leavenworth. I thought it was the same eagle. When I glanced at it one time, I saw it three months later. I said, oh, my God. Uh, this is the earliest uh, registered cover from the Justice Department for all, even Free Franklin official. They just didn't use it. Use register hardly at all. <clears throat> this is a nice um, do postage due three different countries: England, France, and Italy. And came back to the U.S. and has a dead letter office in the lower le the left hand side there with an FD. That's an, you know, the only recorded example of that that cancel. This is one of my greatest. I think this is a fabulous cover. Um, Reference. Uh, Bankruptcy refugees were supposed to provide their own resources. So he had a hand stamp produced, and then he used it on, on this cover. This is thanks to you to Garfield Perry. Now, agriculture. Um, we didn't have an agreement with Canada, even though this has a penalty clause on it. So they had to use a stamp. This is the only example of a... Uh, of agriculture going outside uh, the U.S. And this shows two different penalty clauses. They wanted to be sure that you knew it was the World's Columbia Expo, so they got a label on there. This is the only example of, the, of this label. Uh, I mentioned before that they sent seeds out to people. There are very few examples of seeds, uh, the envelopes themselves. And this one, you can see the member of Congress took credit for it because he signed it, even though it was he didn't have the penalty clause. And 
I was offered a while back and I, I bought a very bad envelope, but inside were envelopes, small little envelopes, and they still had the original seeds in them with the planting instructions. Uh, I just like this because you don't see very many fancy cancels on penalty mail. This is a nice tooth uh, pumpkin. Uh, this is going to, this is doing a, right after the uh, Spanish-American War. This is going to General Aguinaldo, Aldo, can't pronounce him. Uh, they, any mail that's going to him, they, they capture, they notice it has a number. That's the number of the document that they had. And I don't know, this was after they'd captured him because uh, he tried to take over the Philippines after we beat the Spanish. And this is routed through uh, from Puerto Rico to Vancouver to Hong Kong to the Philippines. I don't know why the Weather Bureau would send something from Puerto Rico all the way to the Philippines. And this is just a nice uh, forwarded uh, penalty cover from Belgium to Russia. Then we have the post office, a little bit more complex. This is a 12 cents credit to the U to England, and nobody paid any money for a postal service. So you, I don't know why. The, ten, the Big Ten is uh, actually going into Chile. That's paying inside Chile. But the 12 cents is actually a, a credit to England. Now this is a, uh, looks like a nice, this is going to San Domingo. It's short paid because they weren't UPU, but this was a wreck cover. This is an ambulance cover containing uh, the contents of a, from a cover from the steamer Metropolis that was lost. And this is a nice cover going down to uh, Philadelphia, up to Philadelphia. And they were trying to find this ship and it wasn't there and there was a forwarding agent. So he sent it on to Germany but he put a, a printed uh, foreigner's agent on the back, tied with the New York Foreign Department. And this is a details of that. Uh, this is the only label we've seen, it's actually the only foreign official mail I've seen with in uh, <coughs> penalty mail. This is just a nice bisect, the only penalty cover with a bisect on it. Uh, and this is uh, to a local, he had to pay there's no one, we know this is around 82, 83, <clears throat> because this is to a private citizen and they weren't supposed to use penalty mail to private citizens. So he had to <clears throat> put a stamp on it and he didn't have any three cent stamps. And this is the, probably my greatest destination. Sark is about less than a mile square out in the uh, Channel Islands. And it's part of, part of the Guernsey Bailiwick. Pretty nice cover. Great destination. Uh, this is the earliest usage from the Boxer, the earliest penalty use from the Boxer Rebellion. This is a uh, post office to post office official mail where you didn't have to have any stamps, just send it. But this is from a, only one from a t U.S. territory to a foreign country. This is going down to New South Wales and Sydney from some Pago Pago in Samoa, America Samoa. Then this is a nice AR. Uh, cover from Shanghai, the only one recorded from Shanghai, only AR recorded. recorded. Uh, this is a nice, uh, this is short paid, and obviously they didn't, they should have, this is going to, even though it's a British council, they, they, they wrote sister, they shouldn't have done that. So there's little uh, Korean marks on there, it's probably Chinese, it says 22 cents, 25 cents. And this is the back. It has a regular Korean stamp with the <coughs> postage due hand stamp on it to indicate that they paid paid their postage. And this is a fabulous cover. This is from the 1906 earthquake in San Francisco. I mean, just like two weeks after, this is sent to a gentleman who asked about his son. This is back going back to the inquiring for your son, and it's been turned over to this Citizens Bureau, and it says in in handwriting, keep up courage. And uh, this is fabulous cover. Uh, never seen anything like this. Uh, it's the only one known. Then we have some independent commissions. This is uh, fishing. Yeah, they're out of time. 
Okay, can I jump, jump? Okay, that's Fishing Fisheries, Smithsonian, Library of Congress, a uh, whole uh, thing. And this one has a printed uh, uh, a clause in the upper left that was from another um, envelope that's glued on to pay the postage from France to the US on a US ship. And that's it.